Hello there, I'm Laszlo from the Cute Company, from, you know, I work in Oslo, Norway, and uh, it's time to talk about graphics. So some of you might have heard uh, Lars's keynote earlier today, which actually, you know, I think contained quite a lot of interesting things about Qt6, especially Qt6.0 and some of the graphics uh, improvements, changes to the graphics stack we are doing there. And uh, in this talk, um, we're gonna try to take a, you know, a bit of a deeper look. Of course, it's probably not gonna be that deep, but yeah, since Qt6.0 is coming out, it's really probably time to look at what's there, what are the exciting new things. What we are really going to uh, dive into a little bit is, of course, graphics, but obviously it will mostly be a well, let's say a part of it. So what, uh, you know, for example, I am most interested in is really the accelerated side of things. So when, you know, 3D APIs like, you know, OpenGL and now Vulkan Metal Direct 3D are involved, as you might know, these are the technologies that power things like Qt Quick and, you know, now also Qt Quick 3D. So if we now want to start, I think it's good if we take a look at some of the, well, let's say UI technologies. This is a bit of a bombastic title. So really what I want to give is just a short overview of the various ways to create a user interface, like on your desktop PC, for example, create a window uh, 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 with Qt, because there are many different ways. And Unsurprisingly, I'm going to focus on things that involve 3D in some form. So first of all, well, okay, of course, the, this one does not involve 3D yet, but pretty much everyone knows widgets. So what is this? This is the classic uh, way of working with Qt, you know, Q application, Q push button, and so on, and so on, Q main window. And... Of course, is this available in Qt6.0? Mm, of course. <laughs> now, this traditionally uh, did not really involve, you know, accelerated graphics. So this is typically all rendered in, in software. So what you see there, just one of the simple examples. So all that is typically you know, going through, you know, QPainter or which is our API to draw primitives such as uh, lines, rectangles, text and so on, images. And then, you know, we end up with some image data in the end, really just, the, you know, pixels. And then that, of course, ends up in some uh, windowing system specific structure somewhere. Uh, I'm going to touch widgets a little bit later on, because there are some interesting research topics around this. But as a general rule, I think we can safely state that you know, Qt6.0 will not change the, the behavior or the, how, how rendering works. Next, we take this a little bit further and now suddenly 3D is in, involved. So what you see there is just a screenshot of one of our Vulkan examples, which got introduced in Qt 5.10. And, you know, this is a bit more interesting, <laughs> for example, to me, since now, okay, we have widgets, which is, of course, uh, good old software and their stuff. But then there is another window in there. So what you see there, it's actually two native windows from the window ex windowing system's perspective. And one of them is just a queue window, and it has some Vulkan rendering. You know, the triangle in this case is rendered with Vulkan. Of course, it could have been OpenGL, Metal, Direct3D, whatever. And, uh, you know, this is, of course, an important uh, use, use case for many of the Qt users and customers out there, since, you know, it's fairly common that, you know, you do your 2D uh, controls elements either with widgets and Qt Quick, but then you have your own uh, 3D world, maybe your own engine, you want to do something custom, which, of course, is done directly with one of the 3D graphics APIs. Now, this thing is, uh, you know, there's nothing n new there, so this can be expected to work as is in Qt6.0. 
Moving on, there's a, another other case, which I'm just really cover, touching here for completeness, is QOpenGL widget. So the question is, how many native windows do you have in this example? So is it one or seven? <laughs> because based on the previous slide, you know, we might think it's seven, right? But in practice, this is one. This is only interesting because internally, this works a bit differently. And this will continue to work as is in Qt 6.0. But of course, this compositing infrastructure, so when we really render into textures and then, you know, just draw textured quads, both with the widget content and the content of the various QOpenGL widgets. So, of course, this is tied to OpenGL, and for the time being, this will continue to be tied to OpenGL in Qt 6.0 as well. And now we are finally touching things like Qt Quick. So QML, which is the you know, language to make it easy to declaratively describe user interfaces, and Qt Quick, which of course provides a Qt Quick scene graph and elements like text, rectangle, image, and so on. So this is one of the areas where there are big changes internally. Of course, it's not necessarily visible on the outside. So of course, most of the Qt Quick public APIs, you know, are there and will you know, continue to work just like in Qt 5. But the actual rendering may happen in a very different way in Qt 6.0. Uh, moving on to the you know, sometimes interesting uh, combination of the two worlds, QQuick widget. So this is when we get or cute quick content rendered into a texture and then compose it together again with you know the traditional widget uh, uh, UI. This will be available in Qt 6.0, but it will be tied to OpenGL. So while Qt 6.0 is you know introduces support for Vulkan Metal D3, the other things in Qt Quick, Qt Quick widget in particular will remain tied to OpenGL for now. And, of course, one of the biggest things, at least from us graphics people's perspective in Qt 6.0, is that Qt Quick 3D is there. Of course, it was there in Qt 5.15, but now this is the place where we have really a lot of improvements. Since it has a bunch of new features, it has redesigned features, and of course the rendering, just like with Qt Quick, is, is, is completely different. So now it comes with full support for functioning on Vulkan, Metal, Direct3D, of course, in addition to OpenGL. And now, if you... <laughs> yes. So don't be scared of these screenshots, since the next two slides actually show some, you know, screenshots from certain prototypes. But I think this really sums up the concept pretty well, because you will probably hear the term unified scene graph a lot in, in, in co connection with Qt 6. And what does this mean? Because, of course, it's unified. It's a quite overload term. You know, what does it really mean? So this is uh, interesting since the boundaries of the you know, 2D and 3D worlds are a bit, you know, getting removed. Things are now melting together. So if you look at this application, it's quite nice because it's basically just cute quick. You have text, you have that green rectangle around things, but then there's a cube as well. So, of course, there is a cube, uh, 3D scene in there, but then the text, the image, and of course, there is this well known cinematic experience demo from Qt 5 times. So, of course, that's all 2D stuff, but now it's kind of all there, rendered in a single render pass which is basically the big new things in Qt 6. So this is not composition-based. So like we render everything to textures and then, you know, draw texture quads. So there's nothing like that. This is no, you know, the 2D and 3D stuff can get rendered in a single render pass, which is, of course, great news, especially, for example, for embedded users, maybe with the lower-powered embedded devices. And finally, to extend that, yeah, so oh, VR. So I'm not sure how visible that is, but that screenshot is a screenshot of the ocul Oculus Mirror. So this is when, you know, we take something like the, the previous example and then combine it with OpenXR. 
which is of course a Kronos API for ER, VR, AR and VR. And then, uh, yeah, using some of the new enablers in Qt6, uh, we get Qt Quick and Qt Quick 3D, of course, rendered into the, you know, say, images, textures provided by OpenXR, and then somehow they end up either, you know, in, in, in your headset, or in this case, it's just, show, just showing the mirror window. This is not something that ships as is, so the enablers are all there in Qt6, so which I think is excellent. It remains to be seen how this uh, OpenXR things can get published. It might be something for the marketplace, we'll see. Now, uh, the main section today. So let's talk about really how do we use APIs like OpenGL and others in, in, in Qt6 and what's the difference. So first of all, here is a wonderful diagram trying to show the situation in Qt5. So this contains no surprises. I don't think we need to spend much time. And it's fairly simple, right, because we have OpenGL or OpenGL ES and the related windowing system interfaces, you know, EGL, GLX, WGL, whatever is available on a given platform. And then, you know, Qt, QWindow, QOpenGL, Contacts, and so on. So we have, you know, some OpenGL enablers, and then the Qt frameworks such as Qt Quick, uh, things like QOpenGL Widget, or even Web Engine, or Qt3D, can just use these. So this is used to be fairly straightforward. Now, if we switch to the uh, next page, which will show us Qt6, what does that tell us? So first of all, there will be not one, but three pictures for Qt6. So this is one of the cases, and this is the case for Qt Quick and Qt Quick 3D because, you know, there are some slightly different uh, uh, ways in there how things happen. So this is the big new thing, right? So now, in addition to OpenGL and OpenGL ES, you saw there's Vulkan, Metal, Direct3D, and related things. And uh, there is a new box, that nice red box there, saying QRHI, where RHI tries to stand for Rendering Hardware Interface, and, you know, the Qt Shader tools, which provides the tools for conditioning the uh, graphics and compute shaders. And at the bottom, we have Qt Quick, Qt Quick 3D. And as I understand, even Qt 3D is moving into this direction, that they do not directly access, say, OpenGL, Vulkan, or any of these APIs. So everything is going through the uh, new graphics abstractions. Uh, the blue boxes, you might have noticed that I split it into two. So of course now QWindow, and then things like QOpenGL context, QVulkan instance, are now, you know, two boxes. So this is more correct from a technical perspective since consider that uh, the platform-specific APIs, such as Direct3D or Metal, they are tied to a single platform or vendor. So, of course, for those, the story is pretty simple. We get, a, for example, Direct3D, we get a native window, and then that swap or QRHI needs, it will take care of the rest to set up a swap chain and, you know, do stuff. Whereas with Vulkan or OpenGL, we, of course, continue to rely on the existing Q QPA, so the platform abstractions, so QOpenGL context, QVulkan instance, of course, it has multiple implementations in the various platform plugins, so whatever is best suited for a given platform. So it's important to note that we are not replacing, for example, that architecture in Qt6, we are kind of building on it. Uh, the next case is, well, this looks exactly like the Qt5 picture looks, because, like I said, QOpenGL widget and a few other things that are specific to OpenGL will continue to function in Qt6, mostly as they do in Qt5. So now, moving on to case number three is uh, going to be really interesting, because uh, now we will, of course, uh, get uh, both things combined. So, 
what we get here is uh, relevant not just for us, but it might be relevant to some of you, like to uh, application developers. Because what's happening here, what this tries to show is that some things, for example, certain features in Qt Quick, I'm thinking of, for example, a Qt Quick frame buffer object, which is a C++ class that can be used to get your custom OpenGL content into a texture and then use that in your Qt Quick scene. So this will be available, of course, in Qt 6.0 with an unchanged API, but it is tied to OpenGL. But at the same time, of course, Qt Quick itself is not tied to OpenGL in any way, right? It can function with others. So the story there is that th these things, or things like Qt Quick Widget, will work just fine as long as Qt Quick also renders with OpenGL. And uh, why I'm mentioning this, because this might be interesting for some of your applications. So if you are today in your Qt5 application are using OpenGL directly, you are tied to OpenGL for uh, whatever reason, that's fine. Even if you are using Qt Quick, the only thing you will need to do is um, probably, you know, add the line maybe that actually uh, makes sure that Qt Quick also uses OpenGL. It doesn't select another API, for example, D3D on Windows or Metal on, on, on a Mac. So these applications will continue to work, uh, of course, using uh, OpenGL directly. Web Engine, I mentioned I'm putting there Web Engine since it's, there's been some interesting research there. So as I understand, uh, Web Engine is not necessarily something that ships with Qt 6.0. But the great news there is that I think the Web Engine team actually did already succeed bringing something like this up. So to get Web Engine's Qt Quick and Widget integration uh, functional with Qt 6.0, of course, it was probably tied to OpenGL, but it's, uh, no, I think that's already good progress that things are functional in, 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 in Qt 6.0. Um, so to summarize, what does, what graphics APIs does Qt Quick support in Qt 6.0? Well, there you see the list. So it's, you know, DirectCD 11.1, Vulkan 1.0 or newer. On platforms where Vulkan support is available in Qt, so this is typically Windows, Linux, Android. Maybe embedded, of course, an embedded. There's a question of the windowing system interface or how do we bring up a Vulkan-based uh, 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 window or a Vulkan-based screen. Uh, obviously on macOS and iOS, Metal, and OpenGL. So OpenGL support uh, does not change, right? So we continue to use OpenGL ES2.0 as our baseline. Uh, finally, those of you who know about the so-called software adaptation, or sometimes called software renderer on Qt Quick, that's available as is in Qt 6.0, so it's not going to disappear. But it does not support 3D content. That's maybe something to keep in mind. Speaking of 3D content, what about Qt Quick 3D? Well, it's simple, so the story is mostly the same, except that for OpenGL, I think now we need to raise the bar a bit. So the story there is that we do support OpenGL ES2.0, but 3.0 or higher is strongly recommended. Why is that? Because, uh, well, certain 3D features, thinking of shadow mapping, image-based lighting, skybox, and so on and so on, uh, will use features that are not necessarily available in ES2 and uh, GLSL ES1.0. So ES2 does work, but with limited functionality. So really the recommendation is that yeah, OpenGL is 3.0 or on the desktop OpenGL 3.0 or newer. What about widgets? So I promise to talk a little bit about widgets. Like I said before, things are mostly the same when it comes to the graphics architecture. 
there is a certain reorganization ongoing, as value towards already done, especially around the OpenGL support. So, for example, QOpenGL widget lives in its own mod module now, which is, of course, very simple. You probably need to pull in a new module in your uh, QMake or CMake project files. The deprecated functionality from Qt4 times, like QGL widget, and so on and so on. So everything is starting with QGL, which been deprecated for a long time, so now that's gone. More interestingly, uh, what kind of research is uh, going on? Because there's an obvious question here, right? That what about QPainter? As some of you know, it does have an... Uh, OpenGL backend and OpenGL paint engine, which of course allows to do this draw rack, draw line, draw text, and so on, to allows those commands to actually render with OpenGL. So how does this fit the RHI-based world in Qt6.0 and beyond? Well, of course, there's been some research, and there is, for example, an early prototype available, but this is not something we plan to ship in Qt6.0, and it remains to be seen how this story goes, how it evolves for, you know, 6162 and beyond. The other interesting uh, research topic is maybe around high DPI. So, of course, the whole RHI. So, of course, on Mac, you know, we might want to use Metal more in the widget stack than, you know, than what we do today, of course, today is not really used there, right? For example, to, to bring better performance for scaling. So there's also some interesting research ongoing in that area. When it comes to OpenGL itself, I must mention one thing, which is relevant for people on Windows. So if you are shipping Windows applications and for some reason you are tied to Angle. So Angle is this uh, translation uh, layer from Google, which basically translates OpenGL ES, well, now other things, to Direct3D, and also translates the shader code from GLSL to HLSL. So this is something we use to ship with Qt 5.0, but it will not ship with Qt 6.0. Well, partly because, you know, many components in Qt, you know, are not tied to OpenGL anymore, like Qt Quick will use Direct3D by default on Windows. So there's, you know, not that much of a need for Angle. However, if you are, for any reason, are tied or, you know, you, you really rely on Angle, then keep in mind that you will need to do some investigation to, to decide, to see what that means for you. And now, uh, a very quick uh, journey, let's say, <laughs> through this rendering hardware interface in the shader pipeline. So first of all, what is this QRH, I think? So there's no mystery there. It's simply a, you know, a bunch of classes that live in, you know, the Qt GUI module. The most commonly uh, received question on our side, since we are shipping this in some form, you know, as early tech preview already in Qt 5.14 and 5.15, is that, is this public? Is this a public API? Is this supposed to be used by applications directly? Well, the answer is no. So in Qt 6.0, this will stay private. Of course, those who are really adventurous can, you know, use this directly. But the main goal of this API at the moment is to serve the needs of Qt Quick and Qt Quick 3D. And uh, it's something uh, to be seen, uh, to be decided. Uh, how we evolve this story during the course of Qt6. So, you know, may maybe open it up a bit. Maybe not. Of course, the difficult thing there is the compatibility guarantees. So, we'll see how this goes. Uh, well, an obligatory screenshot of, of some of the, you know, the, the, the interface of QRHI. Of course, we really cannot cover this in, in, in any deep detail now. So what you see there is that, oh, there's a QRHI command buffer, which of course tells a lot about the design. And then begin pass, so you will be recording uh, render and compute passes. And then how we do resource, so by resource, I mean buffers, textures, so how we manage those, it's also, you know, quite nicely encapsulated. And it's a bit higher level than what we used to do. And of course, uh, 
graphics pipeline objects or compute pipeline objects play a big role, since of course we have to do something that maps well to APIs like Vulkan and Metal. So, you know, obviously some of the concepts you might know from Vulkan or Metal are of course visible in the design of the, of the RHI uh, interfaces. Shader pipeline. What do we mean by this? So one of the really cool things in, 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 in Qt6 is that uh, we will finally have a single, you know, holistic solution for handling graphics and compute shaders. As you know, some of you who are familiar with the internals of Qt may know that in Qt5, uh, GLSL shaders were used uh, basically directly. So, and but without much of an infrastructure. So, you know, Qt Quick contained GLSL shader code in various places in, for all the built-in materials that, of course, power elements like text, rectangle, image, and so on. And uh, how, for example, reflection data, so the, you know, the metadata for the shaders, for example, to say what are the inputs a vertex shader takes, or what are the uniforms in those shaders, what are their names, and so on. There were ad hoc solutions for that to figure that out, sometimes by parsing the shader code, sometimes by using the OpenGL reflection APIs. And what's worse, uh, Qt Quick actually used to have two sets of shaders to support OpenGL core profile contexts while also keeping support for OpenGL ES and so on. So Qt6 tries to solve this by having a single solution, which is built on a Vulkan, uh, Vulkan style, we can say Vulkan flavor GLSL code. And our pipeline builds on two third party uh, 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 components. That's GL slang to, to compile from uh, GLSL to SpearV which is uh, this intermediate format used by Vulkan. And then we use Spear v Cross, which is another uh, uh, well, open source library that allows us both to do reflection on, the, on this Spear v uh, bytecode and also to translate it back, well, back is not the right, right term here, but translate it to other shading languages like GLSL, HLSL, or the metal shading language. And uh, what we really get here is then a package that of course contains multiple variants of the same shader code, you know, SpearV, HLSL, GLSL. And the nice thing is that if we pack this together and, you know, use it at runtime, that's great because then our, uh, you know, QRHI and friends can then pick the right shader at runtime. So then everything just works, even if you switch your application to use another graphics API uh, at runtime. There are other things to this, which I'm not gonna talk about much here. So that, for example, invoking external tools, such as the Direct3D shader compiler. So again, to ship uh, DirectX bytecode instead of HLSL, which is of course great for runtime performance, since we won't spend time on parsing HLSL source at runtime then. But of course, there is a dedicated Qt Quick support in here, because as some of you might know, the Qt Quick batching, which is about merging geometry together to reduce the number of draw calls, it actually relies on injecting certain things into the vertex shaders. And this is supported directly on this level, since obviously it's not possible anymore to do that at runtime. So basically, this is the pipeline what this so-called Qt Shader Tools module provides. And if we now look at the tool, uh, which is called uh, uh, QSB, I'm going to touch that on a little bit later. What's, what's happening really is that uh, we do all those steps that are shown on the previous slide uh, offline or at build time at latest and then, you know, just use the resulting artifacts. And in Qt Quick or Qt Quick 3D, this means that, yeah, we can write graphics or compute shaders once, this time really for once, and then that will be, well, that will just work regardless of the graphics API used at runtime, you know, be it Vulkan, Metal, OpenGL, D3D, whatever. 
there are some consequences for this. For example, in Qt Quick, if you are using shader effect or writing a custom material, so if you are subclassing QSG material, uh, you need to keep in mind that you will not be able to have GLSL code in line, like in QMR or C++. So the solution there is to simply reference these QSB files. For Qtwix 3D, the story is a bit more, maybe, uh, involved, since, it, and since in some cases we might do things at runtime, but there is work ongoing on tools that allow to, again, do all these uh, shader conditioning steps offline, given a, a, a 3D scene. So I mentioned this QSB tool. So this is just a screenshot, and it's so just to give an idea what it does. So there's nothing magical there. We really take a Vulkan GLSL file as the input, specify what we want to generate, you know, dash dash GLSL and list the versions. Or dash dash HLSL 5.0 to get shader model 5.0. And then the result is a QSB file, which we might take a look at that later. Moving on, one thing to note is that this thing comes with a CMake build system integration. So that's just a screenshot of something. I think maybe it's from Qtwix 3D. So you can, instead of running QSB manually, you can leave it to CMake to invoke it at runtime, which is really nice. And what's more, this also uh, not just generates these QSB files, but also packages everything up and puts it to your uh, QRC, so the Qt resource system. So basically, the application can just simply reference. Uh, so say I have depthprepass.vert. Of course, the application can just reference depthprepass.vert.qsb, and it's embedded into the executable. And finally, uh, let's take a look at some of the Qt Quick API changes. So this will be mostly relevant to the lower level advanced users of Qt Quick. So let's go through it in a quick manner. So it should come as no surprise that QSG Material Shader, this API, this interface, it's a public class, is changed. So one could say that this is basically the only really big change, because obviously the fact that it uh, used to be tied to OpenGL in many ways, that's unfortunately not ideal. So while the concept is exactly the same, there are new virtuals to re-implement there if you are subclassing a QSG material shader. And uh, the, basically the most important thing is that it will now purely describe data. So previously, the idea was that with an OpenGL context current on the thread, we call a function called update state. You can re-implement that functions, function and do what you want. You know, call G a uniform or change any state. So of course this is gonna go away since obviously it's uh, not really compatible with the, with the new cross graphics API concepts. So a material shader really just has to describe the, the, the state changes it wants. Or of course it has to just say that I want this QSG texture to be bound, to be visible at this binding point in the shaders. But of course, it will not do the actual graphics API cause itself. That's up to the engine, like Qt Quick. Speaking of QSG texture, things like texture ID are gone, since obviously a function that returns a GLU int, that's very specific to OpenGL. But the good thing is that there are other ways to accomplish the same, or the opposite, creating a SQSG texture from an existing OpenGL texture. That used to be done from this create texture from ID. That has a slightly more uh, cross-platform alternative now. Qt render control. So this is our so-called redirecting story, and this is what enables, for example, that VR example I was showing earlier that you can get Qt Quick content, and now Qt Quick 3D content, of course, rendered into anything, like not just to a window, but like a Vulkan image, a direct 3D texture, a metal texture, an OpenGL texture, or maybe you can just read it all back and then do something with the plain image data. 
So there's been a lot of work around the enablers here to really enable this to be functional with all of the supported graphics APIs. Uh, you might see some new class names such as QQQ render target, QQQ graphics device, or QQQ graphics configuration, which are very simple, lightweight. Uh, I know they are similar to QSurface format, so really they just describe things that it allows you to tell QQQ that use this graphics device, don't create your own, or use this render target, render target being a Vulkan image or some other texture, and don't, you know, don't expect that you can render to a window. And things like set render target, the, there was an API like the QQQ window, again, the OpenGLisms are now gone, but most of them have new alternatives. So now there's a slightly different way to set a render target. Uh, yes, so the OpenXR thing is uh, so interesting, so I think uh, we're gonna take a very quick look at the actual source code of that. There are some parts because it really shows the power of this. So this here, Hopefully some of it is visible. It it's really doesn't matter, so it's not like you need to read all lines. What matters is the parts marked with those white exclamation marks. So for example, this is the Vulkan specific code. So in this case, we get a Vulkan image from OpenXR to render or content into for a given frame. The API is actually slightly changed, so the code has not necessarily been updated to Qt 6.0, but yeah, we basically just create a QFIC render target which just references that Vulkan image. Then at the bottom, you see some of these new things like, oh, we tell Qt Quick to use a given Vulkan physical device, or there is this graphics configuration thing which is essential to communicate to Qt Quick what device, as in Vulkan device extensions to enable because we, we get Basically, OpenXR tells us that, and we have to be able to get QtFig to actually enable those. Whereas, again, Vulkan instance, so in this case, uh, we cannot rely on QtQuick initializing the Vulkan instance since we need it early on, because we need to use it also in combination with OpenXR. So there's lot, lots of interesting chicken egg problems in here. But I think we have uh, most, or in fact, all of them covered. If we jump to the next uh, part of this code, yeah, this on top is really shows the usage of the render control API. So that's not, not that different, except that now we have begin frame and frame, which is a new thing. And you see that when we just we can set our render target, which is our discrete render target, which of course references the Vulkan image internally. And yeah, that's how we get a cute quick frame rendered into a Vulkan image. Uh, then at the bottom, it shows a bit the initialization. So again, things like cute quick render console used to have a function like initialize, taking a QOpenGL context. That's obviously gone. Now there are no arguments and the configuration is done with these much more flexible mechanisms such as set render targets, set graphics configuration, and so on and so on. And finally, a word about, it is just a reminder that if you are integrating your own uh, 3D rendering with Qt Quick, that's of course perfectly possible, but not just for OpenGL, but for all the supported APIs. Uh, granted, for Vulkan Metal, there are some new signals introduced, which you might need to uh, know about or take care of like say before rendering, after rendering, that's not necessarily enough. So in some cases you want to connect to before render pass recording, after render pass recording instead. Uh, additionally, uh, QSG renderer interface is or it's a fairly low level API. This allows to access the native objects, you know, Vulkan device, so, you know, command buffers, other things used by the Qt Fixing graph in case you need it for some purpose in your own custom Vulkan or other code. And uh, as a reminder, although 
this is something we've been, you know, it's been available in Qt 5.14 and 5.15 as a tech review, but this, uh, you know, environment variables and other way to configure Qt Quick are now essential in Qt 6. So since this is the only way of operating, we do not have the old direct OpenGL rendering path anymore, neither in Qt Quick nor in Qt Quick 3D. So this is just a you know, reminder of the things you can do to control what graphics API gets used by Qtwick and Qtwick 3D. All right, so it's time to see some actual demos live. So what I'm gonna do here, and hopefully you will be able to see the, the screen of my computer, is to you know just run a few examples and demos. And we might also take a very quick look at uh, you know, some of the, the the sources, so some of the things related to, for example, how we handle shaders and stuff like that. So our very first example, I have here Qt Creator uh, for 13, and I have a development build of Qt, and I have a few, like three uh, Qt applications open, all built using CMake. So the first one might be familiar to uh, Many of you, especially those who have been, you know, following, you know, cute development in the past. So this is this so-called cute five cinematic experience demo, which we have been using a lot during the past, you know, eight years basically since cute five was released, because it's uh, fairly nice and. Uh, uh, you know, collection of you know, it uh, tries to showcase some of the things Qt Quick can do. So you know, now we have particles, shader effects, uh, more like this more touch-oriented interface, and uh, this, as we can see, it's uh, you know running on Direct 3D. So this is already an advanced version of it. So that you know, it's been ported to Qt 6, uses CMake, and it's prepared to actually work with all the RHI backends. We'll see how that's done. The most important thing is that I will now switch it over to use something else. So, for simplicity, I'm just using an environment variable, which was uh, you know, mentioned in the presentation. So, for example, let's run this with Vulkan. Also, enable QSG info just to get some logs printed. Yeah. Good. So it says it's running on Vulkan. Of course, also in the logs, you now see that, yeah, NVIDIA something. Yeah, it looks like it's actually using Vulkan. Good. So it's not actually lying. Of course, the application is the same, and I hope that all features are, you know, working there. Particles, effects, and so on. And of course, I could do the same to switch to OpenGL if I wanted to. But more importantly, uh, what about effects? Because I mentioned that this application uses shader effects. So for example, this is an implementation of a button. The details here are really not important, with particles and effects. But what matters is this. Because this I mentioned in the talk, that this fragment shader property is not just a string that contains an, you know, an, a GLSL shader. This is now a true URL. It cannot contain GLSL source code. So it works exactly like, for example, the source property of image does. So it, you know, we refer to a file either in the file system or in the QRC, or it's bundled in the executable in the Qt resource system. And you know, the question is, where does this file come from? because the uh, examples, source 3, of course contain some shaders, but those are not QSB files. These are in fact the Vulkan style GLSL uh, uh, source codes. So I know this is a fragment shader that resembles two textures and does something with them, blends them together in some way. And, you know, where's the QSB file? When does that happening? All those steps which I showed you know, that, that happened during in the shader pipeline. Well, if you open the CMake list TXT for this application, that will actually, you know, unveil what's going on. 
So it's quite telling that it has a fine package shader tools, which is important because that makes this function available. So this Qt6 or well, Qt add shaders, it works quite similarly to this Qt add resources, which you normally use to bundle files uh, in, in, in the executable, except that this also runs the QSB tool first. So you can see that here I have this button frag listed and yeah, the rest is up to the build system to figure out if we run QSB, get, get the .qsb file and you know package it up and it will be available just like these other files like this QML and PNG files at runtime. The options batchable, of course, this correspond to the QSB command line arguments. So basically, this is how shaders are handled in Qt Quick in Shader Effect, and the, the story would be the same in custom materials when you're subclassing QSG material shader. If you really want to, you can actually find these build artifacts because you know they typically end up in a generated by CMake in a .qsb folder, and indeed they are there. And just to really show something in action, let's see. Let's see what's inside, for example, this button.frag.qsb. Yeah, so just like I said, this really contains, in this case, six versions of the same shader. You know, I think two for OpenGL, one for Vulkan, one for Metal, actually three for OpenGL, and you can see that, oh, this is actually DirectX bytecode, so this actually means that we don't ship HLSL, we ship the, the, the compiled intermediate format instead. And then there's the metadata, which you see shown in JSON format, just because it's easiest to read. You know, the exemplars, binding points in the fragment shader, then of course, uh, uh, you know, inputs to the fragment stage, and very most importantly, the uh, uniform blocks and members and names and offsets. So this is of course as essential so that you know, we can then assemble uniform buffers suitable for this shader. And then there's, uh, in some cases, shader code, some cases the shader binary. Good. Let's jump a little bit to Qt with 3D. So, this is the, you know, there's an example called Quick Items, which ships Qt with 3D. So why is this cool? because this is exactly what I was talking about before, that the 2D and 3D stuff combined. So obviously this is a 3D scene, but it has, you know, you know the, the scene basically has 2D branches, let's say, composed of items like text, the rectangle, or yeah, the image, or even that rotating circle thing. Whereas of course the, the, the background or that ball, that's, you know, done with Qt Fix 3D. Now, the story here is completely the same, so this is, you know, there's no difference now with, with Qt Fix and Qt Fix 3D. Okay, this was used in Direct 3D by default, I can of course switch it over to whatever. Let's try OpenGL for a change. Yeah, the expectation is that it will run the same way. Indeed, there's some OpenGL context there, so good. Uh, in case it's not entirely clear what I meant by this you know, 2D branches, you know, seriously think about this, so you know, this is such a powerful thing, it is it so. So the scene starts out, you know, view 3D, perspective, camera, lights, there's these models for the, you know, those rectangles forming the background, like the walls. But then, this is when things become interesting, that node, that's more like item, but in the 3D world. And then we just start adding, you know, 2D subtrees, 2D children, like item, rectangle, text, image, straight to the 3D elements. And, yeah, this then, you know, gets turned into, you know, this combined 2D, 3D. Uh, um, C world. And yeah. If we jump into render doc, which is a you know tool, so I'm gonna just capture a frame from this application. Okay. 
Yes. Yeah, and yeah, it's nicely annotated. But this is the, what's really new in Q6. If you consider that, uh, let's see the texture view. Yeah. So okay, there are these drawings, the draw cost for 3D stuff. But then there is no other render targets. Basically, from here you get here. So this is now cute quick. The 2D elements are rendered. Well, of course, the order would depend on really the order of the things in the scene. And then, yeah, more stuff, because I think there are three uh, 2D branches in this scene. And, yeah, so it's, a, it's, it's, it's basically a single pass. There is some other stuff later, since it's using off-screen render mode, and maybe multi something is in, involved, hence we have a resolve. Multi example resolve, that's fine. But really, the scene itself can be rendered in one go, in one pass, which I think is excellent news, and really opens the door to doing these efficiently doing these combined, you know, 2D, 3D worlds. So, thank you for your attention. I think this little demo session was now sufficient to, you know, to really see things, some things, to see things uh, in action, and hopefully many of you will try out Q6O when it comes out later this year.